And she really thought that just like a ukulele would be enough, like she couldn't get some foot drums in there. Maybe like a harmonica to go around her neck. God, no, no, you're right. Who The, the person in Twitch chat who said like she's such a small bean, she's literally like, Ooh, I'm sorry if I groomed to my nose. Ooh. It's crazy. I'm so sorry that I groomed a bunch of kids. I think like the next thing that I want to go over yep. is the Colleen Ballinger stuff because like I've been I've been busy writing main channel video scripts like I'm spending like most of the week writing these scripts so like a whole bunch of crazy stuff happens and I do not have any time to actually look into it so what I want to just do is react to Ludwig talking about it and then just watch like the apology video as, as far as i can tell from the context that i've heard she groomed a minor and then apologized for it in song by playing the ukulele which i i don't know man that's my nerves many my oh no and she really thought that just like a ukulele would be enough, like she couldn't get some foot drums in there, maybe like a harmonica to go around her neck, because that's pretty low effort. <laughs> that's pretty low effort. All right, let's let's get in. This is crazy. I don't know how to start this. This is crazy. I This is the worst apology video of all time, and it dropped today. And I don't know how you gain the title of worst apology video on YouTube after the decade-long saga of apology videos that we have had, but but this, this is it. This is the one. Don't believe me? Let's just watch the first 15 seconds together. Starts out normal enough. Big sigh. <laughs> okay. What are you going to do with that? Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. There was something I saw on Twitter about this that I need to find, like, right now. Here it is. I'm so sorry that I groomed a bunch of kids. <laughs> so funny. So good. <laughs> All right, let's let's get back. Hey. Okay, dude. This is crazy. She brought out a ukulele in an apology video. And if you don't know, this is Colleen Vlogs, a.k.a. Colleen Ballinger. Somebody you might recognize as the face of Miranda Sings, a very old but viral YouTube channel that was popular for, uh, well, this type of content. Today I'm so excited for my video because I'm reacting to TikToks, not to be confused with Take Tanks, which... Generally content catered towards a younger audience with the, which again, there's no problem. Man, I feel so fucking old when he, when he said like, uh, some, he's talking about four years ago and talking about some old stuff on YouTube. You probably don't remember because he's talking to his, his zoomer army right now. With that, making content for kids is is literally why YouTube exists. If kids did not watch YouTube, the website would die in five years. So I got no problem with that at all. Uh, however, Colleen was under some accusations lately and decided to make an apology video responding to it, which was more of a 10-minute, somewhat rehearsed, somewhat improv song. I'm just going to show you a few highlights of the apology video, and then we're going to get into why the apology video was made in the first place. So let's just take a look at, again, some of the highlights here. Uh, I'll just let it play. I never had any bad intentions. But I do feel like shit. <laughs> the, it, it, it's so hard. The tone is so funny. She's like so chipper making this video. Just the smile, her big eyes, when the, the accusations are about grooming multiple minors. This is wild. Hard to look at her, like, like trying to talk earnestly, while she also lines up her fingers on the fret. 
God, no, no, you're right. Who the the person in Twitch chat who said like she's such a small bean? She's literally like, ooh, I'm sorry, we like whom to mind those. Ooh. It's crazy. Dragging down the tracks of misinformation, toxic gossip train. You got a one way ticket to manipulation station. The mo as you can tell from the chorus, the, 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 the biggest shit. part of this apology video is saying that all these accusations are overblown and that she doesn't deserve them and it's ruining her life and she feels like shit because of all of them. Uh, and, and one of my favorite parts is when she goes to reach for the camera to end the song and, and presumably end the video. And then while she reaches out, she's inspired for one final encore. Oh no! Oh my God! This is... I can't I believe I this shit. This is crazy. Um, this video is crazy. Like, <laughs> maybe you're confused about something. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, this should be a more structured mogul mail where we talk about like why Jesus this is happening Christ. and in the in the in the impact this has and and maybe what your sh takeaway should be. But I, I don't I don't I don't know what else to say, man. It's crazy. She has a ukulele. Let me try to help. Um, sometimes people make a mistake and it doesn't make them a horrible person. Whoa. She sings this for about a minute straight. That's not an exaggeration. I'm going to skip ahead. Make mistakes simply because they made a mistake. This is crazy. It's, it's just, it's, I, my brain's, you're the, just like Jesus Christ. The framing, the framing of grooming multiple minors as I just made an itty bitty mistake, just a small little tiny whiny mistake. I'm so sorry. It's fuck yeah. Just, oopsie, I groomed some minors. Oh. And that mistake doesn't make them a terrible human. It just makes them a human. And the end of the apology has to be my favorite outro you could possibly do. I, I do think there is one positive takeaway. Everybody should end every apology video like this. What do I know? <laughs> what? Fuck me, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the worst, <laughs> worst mogul mail I've ever done. That 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 that's the apology. That's the apology video. It's going viral right now. It just came out a couple of hours ago uh, because of the absurdity of it. And people who do not know the situation at all are now being drawn to find out what the fuck happened for that video to have been made, uh, which is exactly what I did. It's a bit of a Streisand effect where more people are going to find out what happened and what, why people are mad at uh, Colleen, aka Miranda. This C is so true. This is literally what happened. I didn't know any of this i am now watching this video to find out about this because the ukulele thing was so fucking wild uh because of her very very bad apology video uh and and i and i did all the work for you so so uh, it, let's take a look and, and and before we jump in it is it is look this is you we're being a piece of shit right now you and me can we agree on that we're being a little piece of shit where we're we're diving into a little uh drama uh dump of the day to find out what the fuck this crazy video is about and then we're gonna move on so let's not pretend like we actually care right we we don't. I already accept this a long time ago brother Oh, we don't we don't actually care about about the situation and the people impacted. Maybe we will for like an hour and we'll feel good and be like, yeah, fuck Colleen. And then we're going to move on as if this was never a part of our lives. So so understand that. Keep that context in the back of your mind and let's not get uh, 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 overly attached or, or, or attack people because because we didn't give a shit before this and we won't give a shit tomorrow. Just being real. Let's just be real. This is what that's this is all this is. This is little sweet slop of drama. So what was this whole apology video about and why did Colleen? Pauline need to whip out the ukulele. The accusations were about grooming. It's, it's, it's gro gro grooming is the core of what we're talking about here today. The grooming accusations were so severe that sponsors dropped Colleen because of them. And it started not just a few weeks ago, but a few 
years ago when a YouTuber called Sheesh. Adam McIntyre made a video about Colleen. And at the time, Adam was about 16 years old, I think. Uh, and for reference, Adam was a huge fan of Colleen. He even made a video uh, celebrating Colleen that, that's basically a 22-minute uh, long tribute to her in her content. Uh, however, that changed a year later after Adam ended up meeting Colleen uh, talking with Colleen and having a working relationship with her. Now, bear in mind- uh, Can I also talk about how I hate the framing of what is and what isn't drama? Like, it seems like any conflict, no matter the severity, can be framed as internet drama. I don't feel like that's right. Like, I feel like when minors are getting groomed and situations where there's actual violence and domestic abuse- and all of these like really terrible things. This goes like way beyond drama. This isn't drama anymore. Like legit crimes are being committed. Like when Keemstar is calling me a fucking uh, groomer and I'm like, oh yeah, well actually you're a double pedophile. You're like twice as bad as a regular pedophile. Like that's internet drama. That's pretty inconsequential, all things considered. But this, what she did changed lives forever. At this time, Colleen is a 33-year-old woman, a woman, uh, and Adam is a 16-year-old kid. Uh, and Adam, huge fan, saw that Miranda Sings was kind of falling off and reached out to Colleen with some ideas to spice up the social media and start getting everybody who's a fan of, of Miranda back involved and, and get Miranda in the limelight again. Uh, and those ideas uh, were, were pretty good. Good enough. Wait, Arif said, I think some of it has to do with the way it's covered. Ludwig is covering it like it's drama, and so it's in the job. Oh, I mean, that's true, but... I want to find more of this context that Colleen was like, hey, you can be a social media intern. And Adam's like, cool, I am social media intern. And she's like, here's my Twitter login. You can tweet whatever you want. And I was like, cool, I will tweet whatever I want. And that's what Adam did to pretty good success. There was a lot more traffic. A lot more people were engaging and the fans were a lot happier with the exception of one tweet that had some controversy. And the tweet was uh, something that was maybe like queer baiting that, that people were like, hey, Colleen, you're not gay. You can't do this and, and weren't very happy with. And Colleen got like a little nervous and was like, hey, Adam, this is stressing me out a little bit. And, and then got more nervous and eventually deleted every single tweet that Adam posted and basically said, hey, Adam, you got you to go. And Adam was like, okay, that, this was all kind of weird. This is kind of a, a weird situation. Uh, and Adam made a video about it and in addition talked about some other weird things that, that mm. you know, Colleen, a 33-year-old woman, did talking to like a bunch of teens, uh, which included being in a group chat with a bunch of teenagers, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but, but that was the core of it. Uh, and Colleen replied to this, made her own video uh, that kind of was like, hey, yeah, I, I, you know, I fucked up. I got a little anxious. I, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. It, it was kind of my bad. And took enough accountability that it seems like people were on Colleen's side. They were, they were okay with the mistakes she, she made, and they were okay to move on from. And although the general public might have been okay with what Colleen did and accepted her accountability, it did create a group of people that do not fuck with Colleen at all. And that created this hate subreddit called Ca Colleen Ballinger Snark. And, and I had to Google Snark even though I'm an English major. Damn. The idea of it, it people fucking hate her. 40,000 members. That subreddit, that hate subreddit in and of itself is larger than my own subreddit. That's fucking awful. Holy is, is uh, hey, we, we are going to accrue all of the bad shit that Colleen did and get it in one easy, accessible way and, and, and just find what, what, what shit is out there because she, she sucks. And that's, that's the general idea of this subreddit. Uh, and this, in conjunction with Adam McIntyre, who three years later has made a couple very long-form videos and exposés about Colleen, led to the shitstorm over the past three hmm. weeks. And that shitstorm resulted in sponsors dropping her and these grooming allegations going quite viral compared to how they were three years ago. First one's a clip of uh, Colleen performing as Miranda Sings in front of an audience. She was like a touring artist. Uh, and at one of these shows, she asked his 16-year-old to go on stage uh, and asked her to get into like a weird yoga position. Oh! <laughs> spread her... Oh, no. That's fucking gross. Her legs and then played a fart sound effect. <laughs> and the girl who was in this video was like, hey, this, this wasn't cool. This made me feel fucking weird and shit. I, I, I was 16. I didn't know this was going to happen. I thought I was going to come on stage for fun. Why would she think that's a good idea? Why? Fun hangouts and instead this was really embarrassing and I didn't I didn't like it. Uh, and, and, and then the second part is is a group chat and 
again, I, I have read way too much about this and I'm not proud of this and I'm not an expert on any, any of this. I, I won't even pretend that I am, but, but I, but I had to understand what the fuck was going on. There is a group chat called Colleenies Weenies, which is a group chat of people who are generally teenagers, fans of Miranda Sings, right? This 12 to... I'm, that, I'm sorry that I heard the name immediately and I'm, I'm, I, I feel like puking a little, a little bit. This is, let's, let's keep going through. Let's keep marching forward. I'm sure it doesn't get better. 16 17 18 year old age and and somehow colleen ended up in this group chat but not only uh, ended up in this group chat would reply in this group chat quite often and colleen has, has admitted to doing this in her ukulele song at, at, at a certain point she said you know I, I thought i was more of like that loser auntie who would talk to all of the kids and be like how's the, your dating life as opposed to a creepy 33 year old woman talking to 14 year olds about their dating life uh and and i'm just gonna show you some screenshots from colleenies weenies uh this first one is uh someone saying my ass looks so good today y'all and that person is 12 and then colleen said pics and then re replied to the person which is crazy that, that that's Fuck. That's holy shit. Jail. How is she not in jail? Are there any criminal charges even pressed? Or is there any investigation into this? That's weird. And then uh, she also used the group chat as a place to trauma dump about a divorce she was going through to 14 year olds. He's lied to everyone and said I cheated when I when would I cheat? I was working 24 hours a day. He will regret it. I've never hurt a soul, but I will kick him in the balls. Ugh. And and these people were were oftentimes like fighting on her behalf. They were they were soldiers defending her honor against her her evil ex husband. And and you know it's very possible that she was in a terrible marriage and her husband was a terrible person. But it is weird to call upon 14 year olds for not only uh, support but also defense in, in those times. Uh, it goes further. Just, just really weird things to be sharing with kids. Uh, That's really fucking weird. You're a grown ass woman. You should have grown ass adult friends to vent about these issues to. And the only reason that I could think that she would do something like this is to make these kids feel like they're special. So they'll put their guard down around her. Because that's what grooming is. That's part of it. Uh, um... There are other scenes and dialogues based on true events in season two, but you didn't hear it from me, and that's the motherfucking T. Um, it makes no sense. He tries to get pity for being heartbroken, but you can't be heartbroken over someone you hate, which is it. Weird shit. This is, we this is all weird. This is all weird. There's a lot more screenshots. Uh, just her coming into this group chat where people are talking about like, hey, have you seen New Girl? And then Colleen's like, hi, everyone fucking hates me. My life's fucking shit. My divorce is going terribly. And, and I... I, I it blows my mind. For a long time, I've been the parasocial guy. I made a video called I'm Not Your Friend a couple of years ago where I talk about the dangers of uh, four viewers of becoming overly attached to a creator they might uh, like. And and it is apparent that people do have uh, very deep parasocial relationships and they go way too far and they go very crazy. Like that dude who burned down a streamer's car the other day. There, there are people... Oh shit, I've seen this. Like... Even the one person who was like, he made a cardboard cutout of Mr. Beast and he was trying to track down Mr. Beast in person to give Mr. Beast this cardboard cutout. And it got so fucking creepy that he actually had to go on Twitter and reply to him, leave me alone. This is just stalking. Who are going off the deep end. But I didn't talk about something that I think happens a lot as well. That is also a huge problem. Maybe even more prevalent. Creators being obsessive over their viewers and parasocial with their viewers. I've always been against like calling my viewers a certain name, right? Occasionally you have to do it, maybe because you have to have a name for your subs or members or whatever. But you know, saying shit like I love you to your viewers, responding and being active in group chats with your viewers. It's all kind of weird. And it's a level weirder when your viewers are specifically a teenage demographic or maybe a younger demographic and you are a full-blown adult. I'm a 27-year-old fucking man. I don't got shit in common. See, I feel like this is a bit different. Like, I, I, do, I engage with my own audience like that. 
I think like the separation that someone as big as Ludwig or Colleen has to have makes a lot more sense. Whereas my audience is pretty small. It's like pretty tight knit. I see like all the names in chat and I'm like, okay, yeah, you've been around for like six, seven, eight months. Some of you like up to two years. And I remember everyone. That's a result of the fact that I am not like this massive creator. And I think it, it's completely fine to be like, I'm not friends with my audience and I'm not going to engage with them. But I also don't think there's an issue with it so long as you're setting clear boundaries and you're not using your audience uh, to trauma dump. Like, I, I don't do that. I try very much to only talk about issues that are related to me when there's a point to be made. I have a therapist. I'm not your therapist, chat. Get a therapist if you're struggling because I cannot help you with your mental health issues. This is something... Um, that happens not just to me but to lots of creators especially to streamers because there's that live interaction yeah i don't think that ludwig is completely right here on this point but once you get to his size yeah it's incredibly hard to actually interact with your audience in a personable way with somebody who's a freshman in high school right now i don't want to talk to him no offense i hope you live a wonderful life i hope maybe you can enjoy some of the stuff i make but let's be real I'm 27, dude. I'm fucking old, all right? I'm on my way out in this YouTube game. So I have no interest in doing that. And some creators, they do. They, 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 they like to. And I, and I think it's weird. I think it's kind of weird. And, and I should have talked to <laughs> 27 on my way out of this YouTube game. See, I don't, I don't even think that's true. And Vosh actually did a segment on this about like getting into his 30s and how like the demographic of gamers is actually just getting older because more people who grew up gaming are getting older. And I think the same thing's going to happen with YouTube. More people are growing up on YouTube. More people are growing up watching content online. The demographic of content creators is going to also shift. Like, as, as well, like content creators, their audiences grow up with them. The Angry Video Game Nerd, very good example. He's been on YouTube since like the beginning. And he still has a massive audience and his audience has just grown up with him. They've been there ever since he was like a young guy playing his NES in his basement, drinking Rolling Rock and calling everything diarrhea, muskrat piss or whatever. And now he, now he has a kid, now he's married and his audience, presumably a lot of them are also getting married and having kids. Talk that uh, about that a little more in the "I'm not your friend." Uh, hey, we 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 are not your friend. Uh, anyway, that that's that's about the uh, the the entirety of of the situation. Uh, there's a few more screenshots you you can dig into if you so please. Uh, Colleen just left the Weenies group chat a few days ago. Colleen's ex husband also did corroborate a lot of the feelings that some of the people felt. But you know how 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 seriously can you take an ex husband's word in a situation like this? I feel like not very seriously. I do feel like Colleen crossed some boundaries. I would feel weird if I was a parent and I found out my 13 year old kid was DMing the YouTuber they watched and the YouTuber was trauma dumping about their divorce and saying shit like they were one of the 13 year olds. You're 33, bro. Do 33 year old shit. Anyway, that that's it. That's what spawned the ukulele apology video, and that's uh, why everyone's talking about it. Uh, and that and that's your slot for the day. All right, have fun. Go away. All right. Well, now we know. Not good. Not good. Honestly, I just wanted to catch up on this, but I feel like I should do a like a main channel video essay on the topic of Colleen Ballinger. I feel like there's too much to just do like a stream about this topic. I'm really enjoying the process of like research writing and like putting it all together that I feel like I can't do as well in the live streaming format. But sometimes people make a mistake and it doesn't make them a horrible person and whoa. Sometimes people didn't make a mistake and they're still a good person. Crazy, I know. Sometimes people didn't make a mistake and you don't have to take that mistake. Oh no, I thought I stood up and then grind it and add some lies to it and pulverize it and stab it with knives and ruin a life and... But oh, no, 
convince people they make a mistake It doesn't mean you gotta send them it Oh no